Hooray! Your typewriter alphabet has arrived in the mail and now you want to hang it on the wall in a typewriter alphabet style. That is what this video is for. There are a few things you're going to want in addition to your cards. So you're going to want sorted cards. This is my top row. It starts with one. Uh, this is my next row with the Q. This is my third row with the A. And then my final row, bottom row, starts with Z. So I just put it over here on this side. Then I have four other things. So you, I have a gigantic level. You can use a smaller level, or if you have a level on your phone, you can use that, but we're just gonna use this guy. Then you're gonna want tape. This is just blue painter's tape. And it's a one inch, which isn't exactly true. It's a tiny bit under an inch, um, but we're gonna pretend like it's about an inch. And then I have a tape measure. So we're just gonna use this. Um, you do not need it to measure where it is on the wall if you don't want to, but you will need a tape measure or if you have um, like a quilting square or one of these guys, if you, you can also mark it with something like this, just a regular ruler, if you're not gonna use a tape measure to measure your wall. So first thing you'll do is get the entire length. So for me, it's 65 right here. So you find the center of that, which would be 32 and a half. And then you subtract half an inch. The tape is an inch wide, which is why you're subtracting that half inch. So my mark is gonna be 32 from the ceiling. So you need your pencil. So because it's such a long span, we're just gonna mark it several times as we go down and just 32 every time. Mark it lightly. Um, if it takes you a second to find it, that's fine, but we don't, you don't want it to be hard to erase later. So now that you have those marks, you can take your tape and roll it off and just go all along your marks. Mark this at the same level. Oh, I'm just going to trust it. Okay, so your line is level. You know um, where it's going to be up and down. And now you want to figure out how to center it left to right. So take your, you can eyeball it. You can just eyeball it, figure out where you wanna put it, mark a line. The alphabet is not square. So the sides of the alphabet actually come in and they come in at different angles a little bit because there are fewer keys on the right hand side. So it's okay if it's not perfectly center. It will be hard to notice that because of the way that the alphabet is set up. However, if you wanna be really accurate, measure the entire width of the space that you wanna use, divide it in half and find center and mark your center line. So here's our center mark. It is at 36.5, that's but it's gonna be centered between zero and 73, which is your entire alphabet. However, all the keys are in different places. So what really happens is that we're gonna put, um, we're gonna mark where the letter T goes first. So the letter T is um, from 32 inches to 38 inches. So I'm gonna use just a regular ruler right now. You can use any kind of ruler you want, but I'm gonna put this <laughs> at the six and a half mark so that I'm just gonna add 30 to everything and pretend like that's at 36 and a half. Also, I'm using a Sharpie only for you so that you can see it. I suggest you use a pencil. Don't use a Sharpie because if you mark your wall, then you can't get it off. But I will use that so you can see them. So this is at 36 and a half. So now I'm gonna mark 
32, and 38. So the card is going to go right in between here. And what I'm going to start doing is marking an inch on either side. And that's where the next card is going to start. So these right here are my spaces and that is my card. So the cards are six inches. So we're going to just start marking them. I don't like those tiny lines, but if I do, I'm going to have to do, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to mark it six and seven. Oh, sorry, I was turning that from the side so it's not totally even. So then we can just mark 13 and 14 because of a really long ruler. So six and seven, 13 and 14. And then we'll do another six. So if you have your really long tape measure, then it'll actually be a little bit more accurate because I'm sure I'm getting off just a tiny bit everywhere. So now I'll go back and do the same thing over here, only in reverse. So I'm going to put it on the 13 and 14, and then I'll just go back to my 6 and 7 and mark a 0. So that's the equivalent of 14, 13, 7, 6, 0. And at some point, I'm marking extra ones on the side, but I didn't really calculate where that is. So I'm just going to keep marking them. There's not going to be anything there. So I should be good. All right. Okay, so this is kind of a bonus step because the cards, as you can see, have these curved corners. So it makes it a little bit more tricky to put them on. So I'm just going to get tiny pieces of tape and center them here. So you can see that my one inch marks are a little bit wide of the tape. And when I put these cards in, that same little bit of extra will be there, but that's fine because it's better to have like a little bit of room than to try to tape things on top of your tape. All right, so all my marks are set up for my second row, which is the cordy row. We're gonna start with T. T is the one where the center mark is. So we're gonna center the T in all these spaces. Then we can keep, whoop, <laughs> don't put them upside down. Then we can keep going down. Again, I'm gonna do it every time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm gonna do it every time. Also, a little note, do make sure that your hands are clean. So this, these are uncoated. Um, so you don't want to make any marks on your alphabet as you are putting it up. And we'll talk about adhesives a little bit. So the, I am just using double stick tape. I love using rubber cement. So what I've done here, you can hopefully see it in the light, is I have a strip of double stick tape on the top and bottom. I actually did it on the sides for the next row just to see if there's any difference over time. If there is, I will add it to the comments below. <laughs> so you'll know. Oh, these are so nice. So this is the first alphabet that I have put up that is not printed on my home computer. <laughs> and they're so beautiful. They're printed so nicely. It is very fun to put up 
really well printed cards. All right, so everything is up on our row and now we're gonna mark where the row below it goes. So if you look at uh, any keyboard that you have, you're gonna notice that these are just the opposite. They're, so they're like staggered from, all the rows are staggered. So this will get shifted here. So we're gonna find a center here and then we're going to start marking the middles. So this was our center of the entire alphabet, 36.5. And now we're going to find the center just of the T so that we can mark the cards below it. So six inches across, so we'll mark it three. And then because this is the center of the cards below, it's actually gonna be at three and a half and two and a half. That's where our marks are gonna come down. So now we're gonna get this again. We'll go with the 13, 14 like we did before. All right, we're back. So I went ahead and put the blue tape again just to give myself those visual cues um, all along the bottom row. So the, your A is the first letter of the next line and it is gonna go right here between the Q and the W. I really think that I and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give them a little breathing room because that way they'll be more evenly spaced. If you don't feel like you can make that even, just put them right up next to the line and you'll be fine. And upside down. That's my next video, the upside down alphabet. Okay, so now we have both of our rows in place and we have this blue tape with all of our little marks. So what we're gonna do is make sure that all of these extra pieces, if you added those extra pieces in, are on there and that they're all secure because we're gonna move the blue tape. All right, there we go. If you have someone else with you, this would be a great time to get some help. But you can do it alone, like I'm doing. Just watch out for where it's going. Fortunately for me, it's just going right here on this. All right, so when you put on when you put on your next row you've taken it off and now we're going to put it on the top of this row so we can put our numbers on so you want to put this first one that's going down right here over your p okay here we are ready to put on our top row so we moved our blue tape up and we just lined up all the centers um with the with these guys and so we're ready. It's all done for us. So all you need to know is that your one is gonna go right here. So this, the left side just steps down every time. So here it went up one and now we're gonna go up one again. I don't know if you remember when I was marking these before, on this row I marked an extra one here. So because when you move up I think it's wider it's one wider than it is on this row so oh i lied the p sticks out all right so there's our top row we're going to take it off and we're going to put it down below and put it on our bottom row
So, bonus, I actually used the very back card, which is just has our logos on it and has the name on it. Because on this side, there's an, an extra step right here. So I just decided to put it in. So there it is. That's totally up to you. It's repeating M's right there on the end. So whatever you want to do is totally fine. But I'm going to put mine up just because that's my alphabet. All right. And then you take your tape off. And voila, there it is. So let's talk a minute about, this just started popping up a little bit. So I wanna to talk to you about tape. And actually on this top row, I only put tape on either side because I was running out of tape. Um, there for a minute before I got a new roll. So I think I didn't put enough. Oh. I didn't put it at all there. I must have forgotten. That's why it's coming up. So what I'm using is the Scotch 3M brand permanent double-sided tape. I bought a two pack and I used about a roll and a half of tape. So, and I did almost all of them are full strips on either side. So if you wanted to do more, you'd need more tape. Some of the ones on the top have a full strip on the top and then smaller strips on the two corners at the bottom. Except for this one that I forgot. I'm just gonna... Tuck it under there. So we have two alphabets up in our house currently. One is in our living room. You've probably seen it on the Dis Adjacent website. And those are on a flat paint, which is what this paint is as well. And I had used double stick tape, the same as this, only it was smaller. So I just did little pieces in every corner and it is constantly popping up. I did the same thing in my son's room. So that one you might have seen in, I definitely have pictures of that one on Instagram. And his is, it's on like a teal looking wall. And that's an eggshell paint and almost no problems. So it could be an issue with different kinds of paint. We don't have any plaster. It's all drywall with paint on it. We use bare paint because that's my favorite. Um, but you have to do whatever's right for your walls. So I am showing you what I'm using, but I am not recommending that you use that for your walls. The, the blue tape that I used is also 3M. I do a lot of painting because I really like changing paint colors. And I always use the 3M blue tapes. Now your typewriter alphabet is up on your wall. You can just sit back and enjoy it for years. If one of your letters pops off, they're generally pretty easy to kind of center, but you shouldn't really have any problems. And I would love to see what yours looks like. You have a different wall, you have different furniture. So if you go to Facebook and you um, go to the Eileen Chevalier official page, you can post in there. If you wanna put something on Instagram, you can tag me at Eileen Chevalier official. I'll put how to spell that below and share it with me. I would love that. Thank you so much. Bye.